After a long period of gestation in U.S. think tanks, military research facilities, and university engineering departments, in 1973, international satellite links began to transform what had begun as a national experiment in packet switching into the ubiquitous global system we now know as the Internet. On the Internet, names have been used from the very beginning. They permitted users to type FTP UUNet rather than FTP in a long numeric address to contact other hosts on the network. In the early days, each host had its own list of names and often different hosts used different names to refer to the same host address. This became a problem as the network grew beyond a few dozen hosts. Administrators realized that they needed to standardize on a single list. They developed a file format for naming hosts. The file itself was called hosts.txt and was managed by the Stanford Research Institute's Network Information Center, which distributed it to the other hosts on the network. However, this system did not scale, and it was not dynamically updated. In 1983, Paul Makapetris came up with an original idea to build a distributed, dynamic, name-to-address resolution system to replace the static hosts.txt file. Together with John Postel, the Internet Protocol architect at SAR, Paul started work on the first implementation of the DNS, the domain name system, a decentralized distributed database for all Internet hosts. The inner workings of the DNS, resolving name queries and translating them into unique numeric addresses, is almost invisible to use it. But this does not diminish the fact that DNS is one of the most important technologies underpinning many other applications such as email and web that explains the success and exponential growth of the Internet. Building on Maka Petra's architecture, John Postel single-handedly managed the growth of the domain name system for 15 years until his untimely death in 1998. During that period, he assigned country codes to, to some 200 countries. Postel looked ahead to giving this work to others. A first domain name registration fee was introduced in September 1995. Today, the domain name industry is worth a few billion pounds a year. Pronto? Hello? Is that Professor Simone? Could you please um, tell me the number of your web address? My website, the number yes. is uh, 131.114.190.24. Great. Right, Thank so. you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. As a first step in 1989, the IANA was established to formally deal with the growth of the net, the allocation of IP addresses, country code management, and uh, port numbers. In 1992, we see the beginnings of the privatization of the DNS functions when the National Science Foundation awards a five-year contract to Network Solutions Internet to manage .com, .net, and .org. In 1996, IANA was a member of the Internet Ad Hoc Committee, which was formed to establish global registries and international top-level domain names. The Internet Domain Name Wars had begun. Later in 1998, the Department of Commerce signed a Memorandum of Understanding with ICANN, a California nonprofit corporation, to transition technical DNS coordination and management functions to the private sector. Its organizational structure consists of its board, staff, supporting organizations, each with its various constituencies and councils, advisory committees, security, government, and at-large advisory committees, and many ad hoc standing committees. Some say that ICANN's process is too politicized, but it's not always clear what this criticism means. ICANN is charged with the task of balancing the interests of different stakeholders, which include private sector, non-for-profits, sovereign country states, and individuals in matters of technical coordination of the domain name system. People have the illusion that technical problems are independent of politics. Is ICANN gridlock technical or political? The answer is yes. Yeah.
Since the birthplace of the internet was an English-speaking country, the namespace was originally limited to alphanumeric characters. Today, the internet community is facing a new challenge, the introduction of internationalized domain names, which will allow internet users to use characters and hence words in domain name registrations in non-ASCII character sets. Some have expressed concern that IDNs will lead to the balkanization of the net suggesting a kind of disintegration or devolution from a single common reference to a state of mutual incomprehensibility and potential conflict. Will IDNs lead to balkanization? Perhaps a better term for this transformation would be babelization. So I've been asked to say a word or two about domain names. To me, it's not very important. Uh, it's like street names. You live on a certain street, well, it has a name. You can try to go to City Hall and get them to change that name, but don't you have something better to do with your time? Now, of course, everybody would like to have the name of their choice because it's also kind of advertising. John Postel did not expect that he was creating real estate that people would be paying for. And in a sense, there's nothing more political than names because what you call a thing determines what people think about it. But then here we have ICON. You see, there's ICANN. There's nothing technical about ICANN. It's entirely political because you could do this name mapping business by any number of different technical mechanisms provided the browser could interpret them, right? So here is ICANN whiffling and, and, and having its exciting times, but as someone once said in another context, people are so emotional about the issues because the stakes are so low. <laughs> well, as I said, we, were, uh, we wanted uh, this film we thought would get people seated, but I also think it'll stir people up a little bit on the panel and, and elsewhere. I'm Bill Dutton. I want to welcome you here on the behalf of the Oxford Internet Institute. I want to particularly thank Desiree Malshevik for putting together this film. It's the first time we've had <laughs> I know everyone did not uh, hear every bit of it, but uh, uh, it will be on our website for a long, long time. So, uh, uh, and it was meant as, as somewhat of a trailer, I'm glad maybe I got a few people here. We had some early versions of it on, online. Uh, I just want to thank uh, people who made it possible for us to be in a beautiful venue like this. Uh, uh, Asia and also Aphilius uh, were kindly kind enough to help sponsor this event. And, uh, uh, Desiree has been spent, and with, she's with Aphilius, but has been uh, also spending some time with the OIPI. And uh, one of her projects was putting together this film. It's not just to bring people here. It's actually she's been putting her mind to trying to think how do you promote public understanding of domain names and domain name systems and so forth. And it's a worthy project, and, and this panel is also part of that. Let me introduce uh, the, the chair of the panel because you realize we've got a number of speakers and I'll, I'll, I'll sit down momentarily. But Marcus Coomer has agreed to moderate the panel. And as you know, Marcus Coomer is, uh, has, uh, uh, he was the leader of the uh, working group on internet governance uh, and is now the uh, leading, uh, taking a leading role in, uh, in the secretariat of the uh, Internet Governance Forum, which is perhaps one of the most important international forums. Uh, dealing with discussions of the internet. And so, Marcus, we'll leave it to you to introduce people and, and carry on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. And good afternoon. It's a great pleasure and privilege for me to be here in these distinguished halls. Uh, we have uh, quite a number of distinguished panelists who have a lot to say. And I hope we also have time for an interactive 
debate for questions and answers, so I will be very short with my introduction. Uh, introducing the panelists from the right to the left. The right on the right is Jonathan uh, Citrain, Professor of Internet Governance and Regulation at the Oxford Internet Institute. Uh, on the right to him, you have Lynn St. Emmer, uh, President and CEO of the Internet Society. And here to my right, there is Edmund Chung from Dot Asia Organization and the Vice Chair of the uh, inter Chapter of the Internet Society Hong Kong. And then to my left, we have uh, Mike Roberts, who is now a consultant on internet policy. But he uh, is here, I presume, invited mainly because he was the first uh, president and CEO of the Internet Corporation of as far as sign names and numbers, I can. And to the left of him, we have Dennis Jennings, also an internet pioneer who is now a member of the board of directors of ICANN. 